Welcome to today's welcome to today's edition of Rainmaker 201. And I had something for you today I thought might be interesting in the sales process. Often you hear me say that sales is literally a set of decisions that need to be made and that each interaction with a suspect or prospect and ultimately a, a client is really a, a linear sequence of setting up decisions. And even in the face-to-face -face consultation, we're asking for a clear decision, yes or no. And so I thought I'd uh, talk a little bit about some content that is not contained in the 201 course itself. This is uh, content outside of that, but uh, might be helpful to you as you think about uh, the sales transactions, the interviewing process, and contextualize uh, what this is all about. And so really, um, since it's about decision, uh, we're talking about decision science, right? An, emergence, um, an emerging field uh, in epistemology and primarily in economics often is where some of this material comes from, game theory. And so the thing about decision science is that decision science is the study of, of how to make a decision, not what decision to make. And so this is an important distinction. And so we're going to focus a little bit on the how. And it's something that you're trying to do, uh, especially in the face-to-face -face, uh, during the decision step, is, is how do they go about finding out from the prospect how they go about making uh, decisions along the lines of hiring a professional coach like yourself. And so the thing about decision making and decision science is trying to figure out um, how to make a decision when there's incomplete knowledge and unsure preferences. And so in our minds, we're reconciling uncertainty or certainty with risk. And so decision science is about figuring out what you know, what's all the, the data that you have, what you can do, what your alternatives are, what the, the options are, what you want, which is called preferences both as the practitioner and from the prospect, how the decision is framed, the framing of the decision, and we get this primarily from the prospect and client, and then of course, figuring out the best alternatives, and you can incorporate mathematics for all of this stuff in terms of logic and probability. Um, I'm encouraging you not to worry about the mathematics uh, and doing mathematics. Uh, advanced calculus or anything with your prospect or suspect, but just so you understand conceptually how to think about decision making. And the key, the key and most fundamental idea in, in decision science is the frame. It's the most important step in decision making. It defines the context of the decision, and that's where you're going to find objectives and and start talking about alternatives. And for an example, you know, you might make a decision to find a new home. Okay. Well, the question is, do you want to rent, purchase, or lease to own it? Well, that makes that, that decision to find a new home a little bit more specific and gives you some constraints, which is why the word frame is used. Now, when someone goes to make a decision, like finding a new home, um, it's usually triggered by something. Something triggers the drive, the, uh, the need to make a decision. And, and there's something called the external trigger, uh, which is also called the decision problem. And then there's just an internal trigger, which is called the decision opportunity. And it's two different things to find a, to find a new home and either rent, purchase, or lease to own if you're just thinking it's too expensive right now versus your current home was burned or destroyed in a fire. Those are two totally different ways of thinking about and framing how this decision is going to go. And so the question is trying to figure out what's the decision trigger, the frame from which that trigger emerges from the suspect or prospect. And this is why we attach the emotional and physical components together, because that's where you're going to find the, um, the trigger. And you'll understand that it's either a proactive process for them or they're reacting to something. 
And this is an important thing to discover in terms of uh, identifying how they might, in some frame of urgency, go about making the decision. If your home has been destroyed in fire, uh, your, your urgency is a little higher to find a new home where if you're just thinking it's a little bit too expensive, maybe you've got some time to make this decision. And so that's why this is important in this conversation to get a sense of urgency and framing and triggering uh, helps you identify the, the urgency for this. And so you've got um, fundamental objectives and uh, values and preferences of two people, at least uh, in this decision process, right? You have the decision maker, which is the person or group who must make and authorize the final decision and take responsibility for the outcome. They're the one that gets the praise or blame. Then you have the stakeholder in decision science, which is the individual or group of individuals who are directly affected by the decisions made by the decision maker. And what's tricky about this is in the consultation process, um, who do you think the decision maker is? Because in a sense, and I coach you guys to to make this a mutual decision, you get to make a decision as much as the suspect or prospect gets to make a decision. But I would tell you that that decision is primarily biased uh, to the prospect or suspect. They're the ones that are going to decide ultimately whether or not, even if you want them to, um, engage your professional services. So uh, they are the decision maker in the consultation process. It kind of flips, though, once they hire you. They hire you to be the decision maker uh, from which they will be directly affected by the decisions you make as a coach. And so it flips. And so that's an important thing we can talk about, you know, some some other time. And so uh, understanding the values and preferences is important. Uh, the urgency for this. I mean, none of us in, in the health and fitness arena and coaches are operating on some kind of urgent, critical uh, timeline where there's a direct effect and a decision needs to be made in a couple hours. Uh, or something terrible is going to happen. Most of the time, if you've read Stephen Covey's Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, where he talks about the urgency continuum, um, there's really no emergent rush for this person to make this decision. So uh, the question is trying to figure out kind of their timeline for how quickly they want to start solving the problem. And so we're trying to ask a question, right? Um, and, and answer this question. And so uh, the pain step in the 201 model is where a lot of this is getting flushed out, um, getting an initial question and then revising this question so that so that we can figure out whether we can really answer this. And and so belief and worldview and value system and lots of things feed into that. And so, you know, what is what is the question that, that we're trying to answer here for this client? Right. Who might give us, you know, some emotional driver associated with a physical need that we think, uh, you know, we can help in terms of, you know, our coaching and fitness and exercise and eating right world. And what is the question? Can what you do solve the health issue that they are presenting? Because if it can't, you need to know that and they need to know that. Well, then you can start researching and doing some other things to figure that out. And that's why you guys to go to continuing education and uh, are lifelong learners so that you can add more and more knowledge to your base. And so um, once you get this framed uh, properly and you understand uh, the, the question that's actually being asked by the customer, uh, the suspect prospect, then you can start to figure out whether or not you can answer it. And so this is what the system in 201 is trying to, to help you help you do. Because once you identify what they call in decision science, the fundamental objective, right? The ends objective, the desired outcome, the consequence of uh, making this decision. Uh, you've got different objectives that fit underneath that, right? Means objectives, uh, their influence on achievement of the fundamental, the, the, the tactical aspects, if you will. You've got process objectives, things you need to do like consultations and assessments to figure out um, what you're going to do in terms of the tactical aspect. And then the overall strategic objectives, how you're going to operationalize and provide general guidance to getting 
the fundamental objective met. And so, you know, these are important concepts, simple concepts in understanding decision science. And so um, once you get all this done, uh, there's some things that, that fit in that. And, you know, you can look at the other aspects of risk and we can talk more in future podcasts about uh, the, the various ways that economists and, and game theorists talk about talk about risk. And so it's kind of a precursor or some foreshadowing for maybe some future podcasts. Uh, we're going to talk about expected utility theory, an important uh, theory in terms of how to construct a decision process, and then something else called prospect theory. And it's another way to identify and think about risk, because that's what that's what your suspect and prospect is doing, whether they want to think about it in a in a in a forward and conscious way that they're evaluating risk. I doubt that when you start talking to a suspect or prospect, or even when they initially get the trigger to start exploring whether or not they need to find somebody to help them do this, that they're thinking, hmm, I need to manage my risk appropriately and let me figure out a risk profile and stratification. They're not doing this, right? Most of the process is superficial and reactionary and uh, you're going to try to help them bring some logic and rationality uh, to the decision process. So, you know, a sound decision, you know, can be can be made. And and so just keep that in mind when you're talking to this other stranger, right? This human that just shows up in your world and you show up in their world and you're looking at crossing and, and combining paths going forward in a particular relationship, which could be for a very long period of time where both time and money is being exchanged. And those are what I would say are the two primary risks um, outside of the physical risks, which are important for someone to consider an exercise uh, in terms of how much time are they going to give you and take away from other things they want to do and the risk of the loss of that time. Because as we know, in the Rainmaker 201 program, uh, one of its most important objectives is to help you protect or manage the risk of your own time and losing it and wasting it on effort and energy uh, that doesn't lead to um, me objectives as a coach, which is to what? Build your career, make a good income, have fun, and work with people that want to be worked with and that you want to work with as much as possible, right? The The prospect suspect is trying to figure out how much time do I want to spend on this? How much money do I want to spend on this? How much energy do I want to spend on this? Will I get injured? You know, it could be kind of the, the, the triad of three primary risks that, that they're evaluating either consciously or subconsciously in this process. And you might want to bring those to the surface and, and have them outwardly discuss uh, the time component, the money component, which we do right in the budget step. That's what that step's for. Uh, and the physical um, safety component, uh, which you can talk about when you you know, present your stuff, right? So uh, that's why that's uh, so critical and why I wanted to bring that up today in terms of um, understanding decision science and how it might um, help support the 201 uh, system for making a decision, client making a decision, whether they should hire you or not, and when that should start, and as well as you making a decision, even though you're the stakeholder, you have a little bit of decision process going on because you may decide you don't like them based on your values and preferences. And so we'll talk a little bit more about that maybe next Monday uh, in the next podcast. And we'll look into a little bit of expected utility theory and prospect theory, two basic ideas to help to understand decision risk. All right. Thanks for joining in. I appreciate it. Hopefully that was helpful for you.